Everyone say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Gosh, that'd make for a great book, wouldn't it? Hey, why don't you give uh, five high fives and just say welcome, and then uh, find a seat. We're going to conclude this morning with more worship, so don't worry, there, there's more. Thank you, Donna. I'll see you. See you in a sec. Hola, señor. <laughs> mas, mas, mas. Mas, mas, mas. Just let me know when you're ready and then we'll get started. But to, Don, no, no rush, just take your time, just take your time. Make sure everybody gets, gets some love. Um, youth, you can be dismissed. The youth are meeting up out um, in the chapel, in that area, in that region. Awesome, I just thought I would catch you up real quick. Um, we had the opportunity of serving Jake's House Church up at North um, this last week, a whole week. Um, we were there with our Daniel Company interns um, and uh, our, our good friend, family member, Sarah Wilson, Charlie Shant, um, came in and uh, man, I'll tell you, Friday night was unreal. It was, it was actually Saturday, wasn't it? Saturday night, Friday night, it was Friday night. Um, presence of God just came in there. Man, the Lord did so many incredible things. Uh, uh, the lame walked, the blind could see, um, and, um, and people that did not know Jesus gave their lives uh, to the Lord. And um, so uh, one, one, um, one gal, uh, uh, crippling back pain, um, had to use an electric wheelchair, um, was on oxycodone. Uh, um, uh, the Lord totally healed her back. She got up, she began walking back and forth without her wheelchair or her cane, um, completely pain-free. Yep, um, that's cool and stuff. A guy that was 95% blind and had to be led around by his wife um, got his vision back. And so, um, yeah, so much so that the next day he was, he was going around the church without his wife, you know, without his wife's help. Um, the other cool thing is um, he had to have oxygen, um, you know, just in order to breathe and stuff. Got healed of that as well. So he didn't need his oxygen. Next day he was booking around the church, big smile on his face, no oxygen. He got his, his eyesight back. Yeah, come on, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Um, the pastor, Pastor Keith Kippen and his wife, their daughter was in a horrible car accident and the Lord spoke to Charlie and said, um, uh, Black Malibu, um, who here was Black Malibu car accident? And that was the pastor's daughter. She was in a horrible car accident. And, um, and uh, so much so that just recently um, she, w- she was commuting to work and you know, she had to pull over and her mom had to come and pick her up. And, um, and she was just in such pain. She was just crying. And, 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 and her mom just said, we've got to have a miracle. We've got to have a miracle. So Char- the Lord spoke to Char- Black Malibu. So she comes up and, sh- and she gets... Now, the car accident was so bad, it actually affected her vision. So she couldn't see without glasses. And so Charlie prayed for her. Man, she hit the ground. She was, I don't know, down for how long, 45 minutes or an hour or something, shaking, just shaking under the power of God. And when she got up, she testified that she was healed. Her back was healed. In fact, in fact, she was so healed, she didn't need her glasses to see. <laughs> it's okay. You can rejoice. You can, you can be happy about that, you know? It's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> we were at, was it Qdoba? No. Chipotle. Big difference. Um, we're at Chipotle. It, well, it is. Yeah, we got to get the facts right. So Chipotle, there was a gal there, and um, you, you could tell that she, you know, she didn't have a lot of money. And Daniel, uh, our interns, went and, um, and paid for her lunch and just began to minister to her and invited her to come to that night's meeting. And she showed up. And then she came the next night. And the next night, um, uh, 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 she walked up front with Olivia, with one of our interns, and she gave her life to Jesus. And um, isn't that cool? Just this gal that she that met at a restaurant, <laughs> just, man, Jesus saves. And um, it wasn't her, only her that got saved. All kinds of people responded to give their lives to the Lord and, um, and rededications. And, and so that was incredible. I'll tell you, the coolest thing was just the atmosphere. How many of you love just the atmosphere of revival? The atmosphere was just, um, I, I, I can't tell you how far I would drive 
you know, how far I would fly just to be in those kind of atmospheres where the Lord just has his way and you get to see those kind of kingdom uh, demonstrations and realities. So anyways, Charlie Champ um, will be back uh, tonight at Jake's house. I'd encourage you um, to, to, you know, let me just say this. Uh, so many SRCers were at the meetings. It was so cool to see our tribe there cheering them on and just, you know, and um, just cheering... <laughs> Yeah, 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 and, um, and, uh, and we'll see what happens. I, I think they are probably going to be extending at least till Wednesday, and so I think they'll, they'll be going at least Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but I would say, like, it's, it's their church. They have to do, decide whatever they want, <laughs> but I would say, like, if you have, like, cripples getting uncrippled and blind people are saying, and people keep getting saved, I would just keep doing that. <laughs> It's easy for me to say, <laughs> but I would just be like, hey, you just keep doing it, you know? But, you know, I did tell them, I was like, hey, if you get tired, we'll take Charlie. <laughs> we'll, we'll just keep, we'll just keep, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a lot of work. Revival is a lot of work. Um, in, uh, at the beginning of 2016, the Lord spoke to me and said, you're doing the local church well, but I've called you to be a revival center. Yeah. Now, I didn't really know what that meant, so I got our elders and our team together. We went to Leavenworth. We, we rented um, a, a cute house, and, um, and we just got together, and we prayed. We brought a, a, our friend, Millie Bennett, um, you know, to come and join us. She's the girl that goes to heaven and takes her body with her, so she, like, disappears and stuff. And so, <laughs> so we brought her, and, um, you know, just to keep it exciting, we we're like, is she going to go? Like, um, and then, but while we were, you know, we were praying about revival and, and you know, we started making plans, you know, and, um, and really the stuff that we were planning out for five years would actually break out that, that year, which is cool. And uh, because we just, we knew we had the desire, but we just didn't know what, you know, and, um, and that was the very same weekend that San Diego was breaking out. And we had this word about the West Coast rumble and just revival fire breaking out everywhere, right? Going all the way up the West Coast from uh, Tijuana all the way to Vancouver, British Columbia. So the pastor at Jake's house looked over at me. He's like, do you think it's going to break out here? I said, it has to. It has to. It's got to, the, the revival, the glory has to come here. And then it's got to keep going up into Vancouver, British Columbia. Like it has to. Like, like, like you know, um, if not now, then, you know, <laughs> and if not you, then who? So, um, so the Lord really has called us, you guys, to be a center of revival in Seattle. And that means that we're doing a local church, right? But local church, that's not, that's not the whole thing. That's like a, that's a spoke on the wheel, okay? Um, for, for years, it's kind of like everything that God's going to do has to occur in the local church. Well, that's not necessarily all that, all that biblical because when we look at the book of Acts, which we're getting back to today, so we're going to be going back to the book of Acts. When you look at the book of Acts, we see different models for um, apostolic centers, and um, we're going to be looking at Jerusalem as an apostolic hub. And then later on this year, we're going to be seeing Antioch gets established as an apostolic hub. Hubs meaning that you have apostles and sent ones coming and going, expanding um, the government of the kingdom of God. Okay, and then you have local expressions of that. And so for us, we don't necessarily know really what that looks like. But what we know is that it's bigger than just here. We know that it involves Seattle, and we also know that it involves a lot of stuff besides just doing um, local, like this expression on a Sunday morning. What it actually looks like, I believe, is some sort of form, some sort of frame of, of the kingdom of God, the government of God being established through some sort of 24 seven dynamic. So that there's like geographic locations that are literally hosting the glory. The glory of, of, of the presence of God. So the glory of God can be hosted in a person in, in us, yeah, we are temples, but then there's also this very supernatural dynamic where, where there is these like Davidic locations on the earth that are tabernacles for the presence of God. And so it's, it's people, but it's also places. And it's also things. I, I think that it's nouns. And I think that we are going to begin to see actual places on the earth where God dwells. <laughs> and that the word's going to get out that there are places and people where God is occupying a people, a new breed of kingdom realities and dimensions and all kinds of, uh, all kinds of things. And I, th I believe that that's part of our, I believe that's part of our call, part of our, part of our, man our mandate. And so I just think it's important that we're talking about this stuff, you know, because um, you need to know where we're going so that you can really be in prayer and really making sure that, that, you're, that you're a part of this. You know, um, local churches are great. We need good local churches. They will change flocks. 
okay? But we need apostolic hubs on the earth because they will change cities and nations. So we, at a certain point, we, we ought to, we're, coming into a body, we're coming into a new mentality, a new maturity, where the kingdom of God is actually a lot bigger than just ourselves and our own issues. So that when we worship, we're not just worshiping with a mindfulness of our own carnality or need for breakthrough. We've got to come into this place as a, as a body where we, uh, where we recognize our authority on the earth and we're thinking far more governmentally. So that just the, um, the, the anarchy that we've allowed, the generational anarchy that we've allowed to, um, to be within us and within the midst of us that bothers us enough to continue more and more supernatural treatment. Like we've got to get beyond that so we can actually begin to address the generational and regional anarchy that's been allowed to exist. Because you won't be able to, to participate with regional redemption if you're still battling for your own personal redemption. Yeah, so it really, we're, we're having to start, we're gonna start thinking like governors, that we're governing our souls well, that we're governing our mind, our will, and our emotions, and that we're being accountable, yet for uh, what's going on in our heart and what we're allowing or, or you know, permitting to actually come out of our mouth. This isn't just for us, this is for people that are watching online. So it's really, really important that we're talking this way, that we're framing things up so that we know where we're going, we know how to pray. We are gonna be coming together on the last Sunday night in January, which is actually next Sunday night, just to pray together as a community, just to pray together as a church, to seek God's heart for his, for his blueprints. Because there's a lot of good ideas out there, but I don't want them. There's a lot of good models out there, and I don't want them. There's a lot of good men out there, but I don't want them. I want, I want God's ideas. I want God's ideas, not just good ideas. Because listen, there's a... There's a um, there's a heavenly prototype that'll work with the indigenous DNA of Seattle. It can't look like Bethel. It can't look like Reading. It's gotta look like Seattle. It's gotta look like the fire of God occupying in this region with our own sound, our own frequency, our own DNA. There can be similarities, but it's gotta be, God doesn't photocopy stuff. Like he doesn't have a Xerox machine in heaven and says, I'm gonna make a copy of Azusa, of, of, of Azusa Street Revival. We don't need another Azusa Street Revival. That generation needed an Azusa Street revival. And that Azusa Street that's still there in LA, they need, uh, they need revival. <laughs> so maybe there will be another one, but it'll, it won't be a repeat of history, I can assure you that. God never does that, you know? God didn't find a great person back in, 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 a, in an earlier century, say, that's a great person, I'm gonna reincarnate him and make him Walter. <laughs> no, Walter's a new breed. There's never been another Walter. Like, he's got his own DNA, he's got his own thumbprint. You know, so it'd be a waste of Walter's time to try to be anyone else, which he doesn't. You know, Walter is Walter, he's doing him, yeah? And I'm telling you, we're about to see a revival that looks nothing like what we've ever seen before, not in the history books, not in another region. We're about to see something that's so new, it's so fiery, it's, it's God coming and occupying um, in a region and burning, and, and it's not the, the destructive flame, it's the redemptive flame. It's everything that's been out of because I, I don't know if you know this, but Seattle is unhealthy. And the Pacific Northwest is unhealthy. And we've got to see health come back to the bride. We've got to see health come back to the people of God. Yet before we get all uh, too overly excited about seven mountains, we need to start learning to govern our own mountain, our own house. It begins here, begins now, begins with you. You are a hearer of the word, you are a doer of the word. You are accountable, I am accountable. So therefore, you don't get to blame anyone anymore. You don't get that privilege. What happened, happened. And it's now time to turn our eyes off of man, turn our eyes onto God, begin to cultivate an intimate dynamic with the Lord where we become awakened ears. We become houses of redemption and restoration where we're healthy, where we're, we don't have flesh hooks going through our heart. We don't have buttons that the enemy can come and push. We're a free people, a liberated people that we are walking and demonstrating the kind of freedom and liberty that can only come from the Lord. You were created to be free. This region was created by God to be free. Seattle was created to be free. And what God does here in Seattle, it's gonna so, it's gonna so rock. You know, Seattle is a gateway into the Pacific Rim. You know, the Pacific Rim is gonna get so lit up on fire. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, nations are gonna begin turning to the Lord. And I'm telling you, the Lord's gonna put Seattle on display. And you're a part, you're a part. To the degree that you set yourself apart, you will be a part. A sanctified one, set apart. Yeah, 
This is the book of Acts. This is 2018. Now's the time. Yep, now's the time to personally engage heaven for the transformation of the earth and to corporately engage heaven for the transformation of the world. We will be back um, this week on Friday night for our awakening night, coming in and in, in contending with the Lord, participating with, partnering with the spirit of awakening. Oh my goodness, that is so in the air right now. That is so in the air right now. And to the degree that you receive it personally or to the degree that you act as a middleman on the earth, partnering with heaven and contending for the transformation of our region, it's beautiful, it's available, and, it's, and, and, and we need you to really engage. So you're invited. It's a, Friday night we'll be here just going for it. We don't really know what it looks like. We just want the glory. We just want the glory of God. Just a, partnering and engaging, receiving, being intoxicated with his beautiful glory. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So all that stuff is in your bulletin. Today we're in Acts chapter 11. So if you've got your Bibles, let's go there. We're going to be talking about how to respond to attack. Because oftentimes we know how to react to attack. Amen? And it, how do you react to attack? You attack back up. Pow, shame on you. Dirty bug. How do you, how do you react to attack? You attack back. Pow. No, you didn't. Pow. How many of you have ever been attacked? Wave at me. You, you, know, you know what it's like. You know what it's like um, to be a, a, attacked. And then how many know what it's like to react to some attack? Wave at me. Just kind of. This is what I know. Whenever you come into a time of awakening, any, any, anytime you come into this time when the glory of the Lord is being released on the earth, um, then you can expect it. You can expect it. Don't be so naive into thinking that you're going to be a burning one hosting the glory of God and there's not going to be any attacks. There's not going to be any criticism. Well, we see in the book of Acts is we see the glory of God comes and it doesn't just visit. It actually comes and occupies 120 people. Um, yep, for the purpose of intimacy and all that wonderful stuff, but also for the purpose of including all the nations. And when it actually came time for that, it got really quite controversial because up to this point, this thing's been dominantly Jewish. So the Lord came through a prototype nation, through Israel, to give a prophetic drama to the earth of what, of heaven's reality. A literal city, a literal nation with a king, with laws, it's, it's a shadow of the truth. When we look at what God established through Israel, it was this prototype government, this prototype kingdom of what was going to be established on the earth through Christ Jesus. But people got kind of um, narrow-minded into thinking it was a racial thing. To the degree that God comes to Peter, okay, so now we got all these burning ones, we got awakening, we got revival, everyone's excited, we got miracles, we got signs, wonders, we got all the, all the, all, all, all the crazy stuff, and then all of a sudden, um, God gives Peter a vision, and in the vision, a picnic comes down, and there's all these unclean animals, and God says, hey, you see all these, um, all these dirty things, you know, that you're not allowed to eat, and Peter's like, yeah, yeah, that's horrible, I don't even want to look at it, and God's like, this is what I, this is what I want you to do, I not, I, not only do I want you to look at it, I want you to kill those things and eat them. You know, yeah, like, how do you, how do you kill a spirit creature, that'd be, that'd be, and eat it, you know, I don't know how that whole thing would actually translate, but it wasn't about actually eating, it was the whole thing of Peter, and we're going to, we're going to be reading, like, that God was actually setting up Peter to engage with a person that he thought was unclean because he wasn't Jewish, yeah, with Cornelius, and so Peter goes, Peter says yes, and he goes to this guy named Cornelius, a centurion, a Roman, he goes into the house, and when he goes into the house, he realizes that Peter, that Cornelius has invited his friends, so now not only do you have one influential, uncircumcised one. I, by the way, how would you like to be referred to as like an uncircumcised one? You're like, I'm a woman. That doesn't even, okay. That doesn't even, like, come on. Come on, guys. Can we come up with something different? So he, Peter walks, enough about that. Peter walks into the house, and when he walks into the house, here's a household full of uncircumcised ones. Yay. All right. Peter begins to preach. He begins to preach about who Jesus was and is. And as he's preaching, um, their cries deafen Peter. He is, he is muted by the response, by the demand, give us salvation. And while he's still preaching, they receive the Holy Spirit. Before there's even an altar call, the whole household becomes burning ones. That's amazing. But that was, that, was, that, was, um, that was a new thing. That kind of thing hadn't happened yet. And how you know that um, criticism and attack oftentimes comes from new things. 
Because it's off our grid. We don't have a theology for it. We don't have an experience. We don't have a precedent for it. So because of this new thing, it stirred up uh, uh, attack. And today what we're going to look at is we're going to look at um, Peter's response to the attack. Okay? So here we go. We're going to see uh, Acts chapter 11, verse 1. Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. Verse 2. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him. All right. Number one, expect criticism. Everybody just, just, say, that, just say that out loud. Expect criticism. Expect it. If you're going to be a part of what God's doing on the earth, expect it. Expect criticism. It'll absolutely, it'll absolutely come. Here's the thing. There's two different kinds of criticism. There's internal criticism or external criticism when it comes to the church. Now, when it comes to external criticism, what that kind of criticism is, like a criticism from the unsaved, from the media, you know, from people that don't necessarily um, believe in, in Jesus. And, you know, um, that's a bummer. You know, that, that stinks. Um, oftentimes, to the degree that you come from this place of hiddenness and to this place of where the Lord is allowing for you to be seen for his glory, oftentimes that's when the external criticism starts. And what can you do about that? Nothing. You just have to kind of deal with it. You just got to kind of keep your heart right and walk that out with the Lord. Now, here's the thing, um, that uh, in Seattle, there was a, uh, a move of God. And this might offend you, and, and you know, I, I just ask that you kind of just kind of go with me on this journey. I'll share with you some of my own opinions, um, and, but you don't have to share. This. You're powerful. You can, you can have your own, your own opinion. But there was actually what I would call a move of God, that many charismatics wouldn't call it a move of God because it didn't fit the charismatic Shabbat Arachidi kind of move of God. What I'm talking about is, I'm, uh, what kind of move is that? Well, Shadakiri Kariya Tariya Kora, move of God, okay? And that was with Mars Hill, okay? So here you have one of the least church cities in, um, in Seattle, um, uh, 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 and one of the least church states in Seattle up to, up to this point. And uh, through Pastor Mark, um, he built a church in Ballard um, up to 10,000 people, um, targeting young men between the ages of 18 and 35. When you walked into that church, it, it was concrete everywhere, no carpet. There were, I can assure you this, there, there were never flowers on the stage. Okay. Um, when you walked in, it, w- it felt like going into a bar. It was like, it, it was designed for, for dudes. It was a dude church. And, and Mark, he preached, he preached like, like a dude. Okay. And, um, and, and he built that thing up. Now here's the thing. Um, one particular baptism, I, I, they would do this often. They, they did baptisms out at Alki, you know, out in, in West Seattle, baptizing 500 people in the public right there in Seattle. That's not in Tulsa. That's not, that's not on the Bible belt. That's in Seattle. 500 decisions from young people in front of the whole public saying that they're making a decision for Christ. Yeah, well, now here's the thing. If that was us, that would be in Charisma Magazine, that would be on God TV, that would be in Daystar. Seattle, of all places, um, we're seeing revival, but we didn't call it revival because it was reformed. Because it was reformed theology, it was Calvinism, it was total depravity, a lot of stuff that I personally don't necessarily care for or agree with. A lot of stuff that women don't have a place in ministry. There was just enough there for us to be able to say, that's not a move of God. That's just a charismatic personality that's manipulating people into a decision for Christ. I would say you're wrong. I would say it was absolutely a move of God. I would say there was absolutely all kinds of legitimate um, conversions that were made. And I would say because it was a move of God, um, the snake came after that move. And I think that the fire was burning there. And whatever issues and stuff within Pastor Mark's heart came to the surface and he had an opportunity um, to deal with them. Yeah, well, that's why I don't like Pastor Mark was because all of his issues. Yeah, you without sin, go ahead and throw the first stone. Yeah. Yeah, it's so easy to point out other people's issues. Well, you got a two by four coming so far out of your eye, swinging around. That's what Jesus would say. Yeah. They went from 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. It was, yeah, all, with all kinds of issues. Praise the Lord. The fire was burning. The snake was coming after that move. And most of our intercession wouldn't touch it. Most of us wouldn't pray for Mar- Mars Hill or P- Pastor Mark because we got triggered by him. It's, it's kind of funny. You know, the dude, you know, Mark, he would, um, you know, we hear a lot of stuff about seven mountains, right? The seven, one of the mountains is the media mountain. You know, um, Pastor Mark, uh, you know, m- most of us are trying to figure out how to get into the media mountain. Well, Pastor Mark actually went and kicked the media mountain like a hornet's nest on purpose to get them to come after him. And then he would use that exposure for free marketing. And that's how he built his church. 
kick in the hornet's nest of the media. So um, uh, uh, Pastor Mark loved criticism. And it wasn't the external criticism that crippled him. It was the internal criticism. You see, as a church, it, we, you know, when the world attacks, when the media attacks, hey, attacks happen. There's not a lot you can do about it. You just have to ride that wave. You know, it, it stinks to be you, but now you kind of feel like what it's like to be Jesus, okay? But the truth is, we're not to fear external attack. We're not even supposed to fear internal attack, but we do have to deal with internal attack. This is what it says. We're in a time of, of incredible, unprecedented move on the earth. New stuff is starting to happen. Here's Peter. He's going out. He's actually doing this stuff, okay? And when he comes back, the apostolic hub turns against him. And what does it say? And they criticized him. So when we say expect criticism, what we're actually saying is expect criticism from your own tribe. Expect criticism from your friends, from your family, from those closest to you. And it's important that when we say expect criticism, that we approach it with Ephesians 4, 3 in mind. I'm going to say something, and I'd like you to repeat it. Don't worry, it's just the Bible. I'm not getting you to repeat my own kind of stuff. All right, just declare this. Make every effort, make every effort to keep the unity, to keep the unity of the Spirit, of the Spirit, through the bond of peace, through the bond. At the back of the room here, it says, brethren dwelling together in unity. Unity is so radically important because where there's unity, God commands a blessing. Every move of God, every revival, um, every time the glory of God settles down on the earth, the snake comes after the move of God. You had the garden, you had the, you had the, the mankind going for walks with God in the garden. Then where did you have? You had the snake. Whether you're in the Azusa Street Revival or you're here in Seattle Revival Center in 1997, you have a move of God and you have the snake. You have pride. You have criticism. And where is it coming? Not from the outside. And it's coming to subvert from the inside out. It's coming to stir stuff up, to tear people down, to reduce other people. Because if you can have a people together with this unity, they will be manufacturing what looks like revival, but it's just enough charismatic hoopla to convince us that we're not religious when we're absolutely religious with our tongues, with our stuff, with our contending, with our intercession, and it's not connected to the Father because we're not connected with each other. You are deceived when you think that you are connected with the Father and you're not connected with each other. The battle is for unity because when you have a people that are dwelling together in unity, nothing is impossible for them. And that's not necessarily even a kingdom law. That's a law that God established. I don't care who you are, Christian or unchristian, if you have unity, you will see favor come on that. Whether it's a football team and you're in unity, you will see favor come on that unity because you have brethren dwelling together, sharing the pain, sharing the responsibility. But if you've got one person on that team that's cutting people down and talking bad about other people behind their back, you got a snake in your garden. You got a snake in your garden, and you've got to take that snake seriously. I'm not talking about a person. I'm talking about a principality. I'm talking about that subtle thing that comes and triggers us so that we come into alignment and we start believing, did God really say the problem with Sandy is And that's exactly what it does. That's exactly what it does. That's what exactly what the, 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 the subtle, the prideful, that thing that comes, it comes to dupe you into thinking that you're more spiritual, that you're more biblical, that you're more theological, that everybody else is wrong, that nobody else can be trusted, and it's the snake. And it's not coming after your salvation. It's coming to subvert a move of God on the earth where there's such a company of people dwelling together. And it's coming to attack the intimacy between Adam and Eve and God. It's coming to separate, separate. It's coming to bring separation. And any time you begin engaging with a move of God, you will feel that principality that comes to bring separation. Separation, separation in your marriage, separation in your home, separation to, to bring up a militant angst against the very people that you know you love and now you don't even want to be around them. Why? It's because of the snake. This is what we know. Expect criticism. That he, Peter was a part of a move of God, and then he came home. And guess what was waiting for him when he came home? Criticism. We expect it. 
And when we expect it, we respond with making every effort. Say it again. Make every effort. Make every effort. To keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Here's what this means. It means that you do everything and anything just short of sinning to preserve the unity of the spirit. You do everything, anything just short of sinning. You engage, you re-engage, you re-engage, you lean into the pain, you lean into the tension, you lean into the conversation, you lean into the rebuke, you lean into the unjustness of it, you lean in, you lean in, you lean in, you absorb it, realizing this may be what was like, what it was like for Jesus hanging on the cross, dying for the very people that were rebuking you and crucifying you, dying and interceding. Father, forgive. Father, forgive. Father, forgive. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. I will endure this pain for the glory of the kingdom. I will endure. I will endure. I will absorb. I will respond. I will respond. I will not disappear. I will not disappear contending for the unity of the church. Brethren dwelling, you know, whatever your opinions are of our country, This is what I know. The United States of America is blessed. You say, well, why is it blessed? I believe the Lord spoke to me about this this morning. I believe that our country is blessed because we are the United States of America. No matter your political opinion, no matter who you voted for, hey, you're you're a Bernie Sanders fan, welcome to SRC. Hope to see you at the intro class following, following the service. This has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with the reality that our country is the United States of America. There's not not any wars right now between Washington and Texas. And I'm just saying if there was, we'd lose. Those guys are crazy. Those guys are nuts. Oh my goodness, like. We are blessed because we are the United States of America. Your family will be blessed if you will do whatever is necessary, just short of sinning, to reestablish government, to reestablish order, to reestablish intimacy with your spouse, to reestablish order. You know, how many of you have ever seen that principality rise up in your children, where your children are challenging your authority and you get intimidated, not by them, but by that principality? That children sometimes know how to make such a charge against their parents. Triggering the past so that now a mommy feels guilty about her own past to the degree that she will not challenge her child and remind her child of this of the standard, the order, the government of protection and provision within that home. Oftentimes, the principality will operate in a child to shame their parent so their parent will draw back. Every mommy and daddy, you need to hear this. You've been given... Authority by God. Love your child enough. Treat them with dignity, but let them know who the boss is. (laughs) I love you. I want God's very best for you. But if you ever talk that way again, we're gonna be having a different conversation at a different time, and it will not go well for you. It's authority, it's maturity, it's order. There's a battle for unity, and that means there's no room for passivity. There's no room, the the passive spirit is the spirit by which we begin having conversations with the snake. And it's time to kick the snake out of our garden. It's time to kick the snake out of our church, out of Seattle Revival Center. Paul would say it like this. If a brother is stirring up division, go to him, work that out, work it out amongst the elders, do whatever it takes just short of sinning to protect the unity in the church. But if if that cannot happen, remove that brother. Remove him. Yep, remove him. Otherwise, you are allowing that Jezebelic thing to subvert the unity of the spirit. And you think, oftentimes people think that if you take truth, you sweep it under the rug, you continue to celebrate, that's a culture of honor. That's a culture of ignorance. 
so, um, 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 a, a culture of honor has been, it's, it's incredible to me to think that the number of people, even here, that have read the book Culture of Honor and completely missed the whole premise of that book. People that think that a culture of honor is where we celebrate people no matter what. And that you ignore, and that you're passive, and that you do whatever. Um, Danny Silk says in that book that a supernatural culture of honor is a culture of confrontation. And it's not just confrontation, it's confrontation to the place of resolution. And there are consequences when people are unwilling to carry it through to the place of resolution. And the kingdom expect criticism. And when it happens, we don't disappear, we lean into the tension, we engage, we engage, we engage. But if there's not repentance, there has to be separation for the purpose of God's blessing and government to be established on the earth. Expect it, number two, deal with it. Everyone say deal with it. Deal. You know, I love Peter because when it comes, it says in verse four, and we're gonna look at this in a second, and the criticism came and says, and Peter began to explain. We're gonna talk about that here in a second. But when it comes, um, we need to realize that criticism, uh, there's an agenda, there's, a, um, there's an opportunity in criticism um, for the kingdom of God to be glorified. We're gonna see that. I love, this is actually such a great story. This, is, this What we're reading today is actually such a great win um, for the church. But there's, there's an opportunity for the Lord to come and really be glorified here, okay? But there's also an opportunity for the enemy to come and really, and really to divide. And, and, here's, and here's how this plays out. That when this, when this kind of stuff happens, and as you're part of the body, like you're, 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 you, you may be an eyeball, but you might be a really important kind of thing in the body. You know what I'm saying? You know, we forget about this stuff in the body. But how many of you know that um, the stuff in the body is like the stuff that's really important? Don't get me wrong. All this is nice. But it's like this stuff in the body that's, and, and, and you're in the body. And like your role is really, really important. And therefore, you've got to remain functioning. You've got to be a functioning part of the body, right? Because how I many you know if you've got stuff in the body and it's not functioning, that's really harmful to the body? Yeah? Now, here's the thing. When it comes to function within the body, the, the attack comes oftentimes through, um, through the kind of criticism, this is what I love, that when the circumcised party came to critique and to criticize, they did not write a letter. They did not send a text message. And they did not do it behind his back. They went to him face to face. Why? Because when you go to someone, when I go to you, you get to respond. And then I respond. And then you respond. It's called sparring. You go back and forth. It's called playing ping pong. You're going back and forth and back and forth. And you're dealing when you're dealing with it. Here, here's the problem is that when you get into those conversations with people that don't have power to instigate change, now you have what's called gossip. Why? Because it's not ping pong. It's you hit the ball and they keep the ball and you're just judgment went on them and now they're bound by your judgment. If you come to me with criticism that does not concern me, now your judgment has bound me. And now I have been bound by your judgment. And now what am I to do? I feel conflicted. Why? Because I really like you, but now I'm bothered by you. Why? Because somebody else's judgment has now bound me. And now I'm limited in my love to the degree of I am limited and restricted in what I'm capable of giving to you. Why? Because somebody else's judgment has bound me. You see, oftentimes when it comes to gossip, we think that gossip is just the speaker. And that when you listen to something, that the responsibility is on them. Why? Because they're the one that said it. But here's the thing, that gossip isn't just the one speaking it. It's the one that hears it and then, um, and then does nothing. That this is what we do. Doing everything we can to maintain the unity, which means this, that when somebody's judgment comes ping pong in your way, you take your paddle and you pong it it back. And then you say, the game's over, you go to the person. You see, the Bible says that when there's disagreement, you go to the person, eyeball to eyeball, that this is the most wonderful confrontation because all confrontation is an opportunity for intimacy. No confrontation, no intimacy. You just have this surface level kind of thing that you call a relationship. Oftentimes, when there's confrontation, we disappear, we pull back, we say there's not time, this person doesn't have time, this person doesn't have the heart, this person doesn't have the stamina, and now we're bound. And now we're bound. 
but this is your year to not be bound. This is your year to be free. And not just free, but unquestionably free. And that means this, you're free of all judgments, all criticism, all stuff, to the degree that when you hear it, you bounce it back, game over. The Bible says this, when, not if, when someone sins against you, but it was Pastor Darren. Okay, I'm sorry but let's talk it through. Let's chat it through. I promise you, I won't punish you. Here's the thing, that, <laughs> that, that when someone sins against you, you go to them. You go to them. Why? Because that's part of doing everything just short of sinning to preserve, to maintain the unity in the spirit. And this is what they did. They went to him. They were bothered by him. They were, hey, don't you know, we've had this generational holy expression. We got this intimacy with God. And Peter, you are compromising the move of God on the earth. That's the criticism. And it says that Peter explained. Look at verse four. But Peter began to explain it to them. Isn't this awesome? He began to explain it. You say, what do you mean by uh, 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 explain it? That when you begin to explain, you are working. (laughs) How do you know that explaining something is a lot of work? Peter begins working here. He works, he works, he works to do what? To bring clarity. Clarity combats criticism. Yep, and communication brings Clarity, that when the criticism comes to your doorstep, what do you do? You explain, you begin working, 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 bringing light, bringing life, bringing truth, truth, truth. You would know the truth and the truth will set you free. And now there's a culture of honor, why? Because now you're an adult. Now you know the truth and now you have a choice to make. I know information about you And yet, even knowing what I know about you, I will not cut you off. I will treat you with dignity. I will celebrate who you are without tripping out over who you aren't. That now that it's come into the light, now there can be real relationship, real love. Now, do you know what this person did? Oh, that's horrible, but now it's in the light and I get to be an adult and choose to love them anyway. We bring communication. That means that your mouth has to move. That means that words have to come out of your mouth. That means that you're gonna have to speak. And you may not say the right things. You may not get it right. But you're gonna work and work and work, bringing illumination, bringing truth, and seeing this thing through. Why? For the banner of his love and unity so that we are, re- that we are walking out and presenting a true form of the church on the earth, not just some sort of counterfeit unity where everybody's happy externally, but internally there's no love, affection, there's all these issues, all this drama. It's bringing it out into the light and working for the preservation, for the restoration of unity. I love Peter, because Peter, Peter's got a temper. <laughs> I love Peter, because Peter could have went off on them. Guys, it's Apostle Peter. It's Apostle Peter. This is Peter who walked with Jesus. And it's like Peter could have said anything. But it said, instead, Peter explained to them in order. Verse five. I'm going to read quick because we got some worship to do. I was in the city of Joppa praying. I was in a trance. I saw a vision. Something like a great sheet came down, bringing down um, from heaven on all four corners. It came to me. I looked. There were animals and beasts, prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And then I heard a voice say, say to me, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I was like, no way, Lord, for nothing uh, common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time, what God has made clean, don't call common. He's like, guys, this happened three times. I didn't want to do it. I wasn't excited about it. But God kept saying, kill, eat, kill, eat, kill, eat. And finally, I was like, I don't want to, but okay. Verse 11, and behold, at that very moment, three men arrived. They came to my house. They sent me, and they, they told me in the spirit to go, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me. We went to this man's house. I didn't want to go in his house. I didn't want to. He was a Gentile. He was uncircumcised. But God said to do it. Guys, I didn't want to. You got to believe. Verse 13, and he told us how he had seen an angel to stay at his house and send a Joppa and bring a man. So like the dude is like, Peter's coming and Peter's going to declare to you, verse 14, by message that you will be saved, you and your whole household, verse 15. Peter's like, guys, as I begin to speak, the Holy Spirit like showed up. 
just like as, as the beginning, like back in Acts 2. Guys, it was like the old days. It's verse 16. And I remember the word of the Lord and how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed, the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I should stand in the way? This is what Peter says. Like, he was like, hey, if God wanted to do it, who was I to be like, sorry, God, not today? Peter explains, he explains, he explains, and then check it out, verse 18. And when they heard these things, their criticism fell silent. The room fell silent, and they glorified God, saying to the Gentiles, also God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is what we do. We expect criticism from the inside, from our friends, from our family, from those that we love inside the church, because there's a bad for our unity. There's a battle for the glory. There's a battle for revival. Expect it. Number two, we deal with it. We tell the story. We tell the past. We give context for what's happening. That's the culture of honor. We sit down. We explain. We explain. We explain. We explain. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of pain. But why do we do it? That God would be glorified and that the spirit, the spirit of criticism would go silent. This year, we're going to see God do crazy stuff. And with it, stuff's going to get stirred up. And with it, the snake's going to come. But when it comes, we don't ignore it. We don't partner with pride. We humble ourselves. And when we sin and we don't know it, and it takes another brother or sister in Christ to talk to us truthfully about our sin, we humble ourselves. We go low. Love Charlie Robinson. Go low. Go low. How do you react to attack? You don't. You hide. And this is Charlie Robinson and I sitting in. Uh, a Mini Cooper um, sitting in front of his house. It's dark. It's rainy. I say to um, Prophet Charlie Robinson, Charlie, we've been in it, bro. We've been in it. How do we respond? How do we respond to attack? And Charlie looks over at me and says, you do what David did. What do you, what's that? You hide. That when you read the Psalms and the enemies of David are coming after him, David is always crying out, God, hide me. That when the attack comes, you hide in Christ, you go low, you agree with your adversary, and you let the Lord respond for you. And when it's on the inside, when it's on the inside, we expect it, we deal with it, we explain, explain, explain that the Lord would be glorified. You abide in him, you don't hide from the person sitting next to you. Remaining in him, remaining together. Together we're stronger. Together we present an atmosphere where God can come and hover. God has called us to be a place of hovering where his glory hovers. Your home, a house of glory, where his glory, where his glory presence hovers, where, the, where his fire glory remains and cracks during the night. You've been called to be that hovering place. The battle is for the realness. The battle is for the preciousness. The battle is to displace all counterfeit forms of religious, you know, what does revival look like? Let's do that. Forget all that. What does it look like to be in the presence of the burning, fiery God? What's it like to be in the midst of the earthquake? What's it like to be in the midst of the whisper? What's it like when every day takes on its own thumbprint? What's it like when we're doing life together and it's so holy because you've been engaging in face-to-face encounters with the God-man? It's not about the tradition. It's about the real, truthful, gritty, honest expressions of us imperfect people figuring out ways to do it together. We're going to have to be creative. We're going to have to be creative because some of you are really different. Some of you are like weird. Thank God I'm not weird like some of you. And I know this, that many of you, you look at me and you're like, Darren, 
Darren, he's, there's a, a part of him that I like. And then there's a part of me that's like, what the heck? And I know that we're going to be creative. We're going to be creative to celebrate you in all that. And that your humility and genuineness and transparency to celebrate this. For the glory of God. Yeah? You guys don't even know. Are you ready? Are you ready for intensity? Intense Christianity. Intense spirit. Are you ready for intense warfare? Are you ready? Are you ready for combat? Are you ready to put on your combat, your combat boots? Are you, are you ready? Like, are you really, are you ready? Are you ready to run with the king, not just with Pastor Darren? Are you ready that whatever he says, whatever he does, you're, you're ready, you're, you're in? Like, like, are you, like, are you stirring yourself and are you allowing for your frustration to become real enough to where you're willing to change so that you're not going to Xerox this year, that you're not going to try to repeat history or repeat the past, and you're not going to let somebody else's pain and agenda bind you to the past, but whatever God wants, that's what you want. His ways are your ways, and no matter what it looks like, you will advance and move forward, whether it's here or it's somewhere else, Jake's house or another nation. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Just while you're sitting, grab the hand of someone next to you. Just, just, just speak out loud. Just, just declare over them, you belong here. You are not an imposter. You're a son. You're a daughter. You're an inheritor. Now just begin to release the kingdom out of you into that person next. Just begin to release the glory of God. You little priest, you, just let it go. Yeah, double it, Lord, right now. Let it intensify in this room right now. Release the glory of God. Breaking down every barrier, all resistance. Bless them. You are blessed in the Lord. I bless you now, I bless you now, I bless you now. Lord, we pray. Give us the anointing of unity. Not just an expression of unity. We ask, we just ask and we ask for a true anointing for unity. Not just a unity event, not just a unity expression. Let it be true and legitimate. Real sonship, real family, authentic for your glory. We pray, amen and amen. Pastor Anthony. Come on, if you agree, say yes. Yeah. Come on. When we say yes, we don't need the whole plan. Come on. When we say yes, we actually are giving God the ability to take over and put us in the trunk, as Darren would say. Yeah, whoa. Hey. Come on. So uh, as we prepare our tithes and our offerings, you can, uh, you can give by texting. Um, a 425-441-3403. You can also write a check or cash and put it in the envelope. Um, it said on the verse of the day in a Bible, you know, you guys have the Bible app today? Yeah. Um, it said the verse of the day, it says Malachi 310. You may know it. It says, bring all the tithes, the whole tenth of your income into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and prove me now by it 
says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. How many of you guys are willing to let go of what you do have to get what God's ready to bring? Come on. Come on. So this morning, as we prepare our tithes and our offerings, it's more than just a, uh, yep, I can, I can let go of this. It's, it's, it's saying, God, I'm letting go of my, of my picture of what I see abundance, and I'm giving you permission to change it into what you want to do with it. Come on. Come on. Are we in agreement? Still? <laughs> oh, he went into tithes. I'm not going to, I don't know if I can, hey, come on. Yeah, when we, when we agree with the Lord, he takes us to a new place. And that's what this whole message is this morning. It's all about, we agree with you, Lord. Take us, take this, take this region, take this city where you want to take it. Come on, come on. So, hey, who's here for the first time this morning? You know, wave, wave your hand in the air. Come on. In the back, I see you. Yep, come on. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to copy Sandy. Where are you from? Issaquah. Okay, come on. Came from Issaquah. Make some noise. Did I miss anybody else? First time guests? Yeah, well, we bless Issaquah this morning. Come on. Yeah, yeah. If we can pass the clipboards as well. We can pass the clipboards as well. God's doing some new things. He's doing a new thing this morning. Yep, and if you're online, you can give as well by texting to give or on our SRC app. So I'm gonna pray for our offering and then I'm gonna invite you to come on up. Um, you can uh, put your uh, offering in the basket and then uh, have a couple anointed announcements that, uh, some anointments. Hey, anointments, yeah. Yep. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, that, that uh, while we are stewards of our finances, you are stewards of our life. And, Lord, uh, when we give you something, we give you permission to steward it into your plan and your purpose. So we say yes this morning. And we say yes by giving of our tithes and our offerings. Yeah, yeah. Father, thank you for taking. Wow. Thank you for allowing us to partner with you, Lord. Yeah, wow, and changing everything. In Jesus' name, bless the gift and giver, amen. So come on up, turn to your neighbor, say hey. Maybe shake their hand, give them a hug. If you don't know the person next to you, ask them their name, introduce yourself. Come on. And hi to everyone watching online, yep. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Isn't it fun to be together? Yeah, come on. You know, uh, we have a cool thing happening today. Uh, we have our intro to SRC today, right after service. How many of you guys have been to intro to SRC? Yep. Yep. And so if you've uh, been coming maybe for six months and you haven't been a part of our, SRC, our intro to SRC, I want to invite you. There's free food. Yeah. There's um, opportunity to get to know each other and to find out more about who's around you. So everybody say intro to SRC. That's at one o'clock today. So you can just go and do that. If you've never been a part of Intro to SRC, it's our first step in getting involved and, and, and plugging in here at SRC. It's a great way. You can have leadership there to just uh, a answer questions, share our heart. Um, so it's gonna be good. Also, you guys might have noticed uh, in 2018, I will be known. Why don't, you, why don't we just repeat that? In 2018. I will, I will be known. Come on. So that's an opportunity for us to say yes. And, uh, and I don't know about you, but I've had moments where I've had God invite me to say yes. And I said, yeah. Yeah, but God. Um, but I said, yeah, but. Yeah, but God. 
it's really far to get there. Or, or yeah, but God, like, I don't, they're not going to like me. Or, yeah, but God, what do I have in common with those people? Or, yeah, but God, <sighs> I'm already doing so much, you know, like, really? And, and those yeah, but gods have one plan in mind. It's to, just to keep you where you are. It's to keep you where you are. But how many of you know that God invites us to ye say yes so that we can go into a place that he's like, I'm bringing you here. And sometimes it's just a little uncomfortable. Yeah? You guys ever been uncomfortable? Yeah? Yeah? Who loves being uncomfortable? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, none of us love being uncomfortable. But how many of you know God's not just enjoying seeing us uncomfortable? He, he's saying, hey, I know it's uncomfortable, but if you could only see what I see, if you could only see what's on the other side of your yes, when you say yes, the yeah, but God starts to change. When you give God your yeah, but God, you start to use your yeah, but God as a weapon. You start to say, hey, yeah, but God could actually show up. Yeah, but God could introduce me to things that I didn't even know I had. Yeah, but God could do something in that house that could turn and, and break through into the whole neighborhood. Yeah, but God. Yeah, so anytime you hear that, yeah, but God coming up trying to get you to be silent, I just want to encourage you to just go over to that table over there and say, yeah, but God, you could do whatever you want. And as you close your eyes, he just points to which clipboard. You don't even know what you're signing up for. And then you walk over, and you just sign up, and then you open, and you go, oh, all right, I'm signing up for prophetic dance. You know, I'm about to go do some prophetic dancing. Don't allow yourself to limit what God wants to do through you in this season. That we're going from a place of being known superficially to being known in part to knowing truthfully and knowing face to face. Because God's got big plans. Amen? Amen. Come on. So I uh, so would encourage you guys to sign up today. Um, attend Intro to SRC. And, uh, and we're going to play a video uh, on our, in 2018, I Will Be Known. I'm the kind of person who likes to be consumed with a project. Um, sometimes I have difficulty multitasking, but it's really not what I'm strong at or what I prefer. I love to focus on one thing and to put all my energy into it, and it gives me so much energy back. Sometimes I'll forget to eat, <laughs> and sometimes I'll go all night without sleeping. I'm a musician, I'm a worshiper, and a songwriter. Hi, I'm Vaughn Merritt. And in 2018, I will be known. Hey, oh, I'm back. Hope you're enjoying the service so far. Um, all right, we are going to be taking our missions offering. Um, this is actually going to be um, tied into the announcement that we made last Sunday. So um, we're going to have to go off the air. Jesus. 
have been broken, eyes have been opened, an army of dry bones starting to rise. Death is defeated, we are victorious, cause you are alive. Look on, we lift up one voice to our God. One song to our God, we lift up one voice. Sing it, Hallelujah! To our God, we lift up one voice. To our God, we lift up one song. To our God, we lift up one voice. Sing it, Hallelujah! To our God, we lift up one voice. To our God, we lift up one song. To our God, we lift up one voice. Sing it, Hallelujah!
is formed against us shall prosper Cause he is with us To our God we lift up one voice To our God we lift up one song To our God we lift up one voice Singing hallelujah To our God we lift up one voice To our God we lift up one song to our God we lift up one voice Singing hallelujah To our God we lift up one voice To our God we lift up one song To our God we lift up one voice Just our voices Hallelujah To our God we lift up one voice To our God we lift up one song To our God we lift up one voice Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nothing worth more that'll ever come close. Nothing can compare your living home. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. And your presence. And Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord and Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the Oh, 
and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence,
in the presence of your majesty.
presence of your majesty <laughs> oh show me your glory yeah that's right <laughs> show me your glory wow <laughs> your glory Lord we honor 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 your glory Lord we were created for glory we were created for glory we honor your glory Lord we honor your glory Lord we honor the King of glory we honor the King of glory. We honor the King of glory. We honor the King of glory in this house. We honor the King of glory in this house. We welcome the King of glory. We welcome you, King of glory. We welcome you, King of glory. We welcome you, King of glory. Come in, come into our house. Come into our house. Yeah, we welcome you, O oh King. We welcome you. We, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise amongst us. Let it rise. Let it increase. Let it increase. We make room. We make room. Make room for the glory. Make room for the glory. Make room for the glory. Make way for the glory. Hey, make way for the glory. Hey, make way for the glory. Make way for the glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let the glory of the Lord, let it rise. Let it rise from this city, God. Let it rise. Let the fragrance, the frequency of your glory. We were created to be a people of the glory, to be a glory company, to be a glory people, to be a glory people. Yeah, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Yep, 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 yep. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Go ahead, worship team. Just come Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Just dedicate yourself to the glory. Dedicate yourself to the glory realm. Come on, worship team. Come on, lift up your voice. Welcome the king. Welcome that glory realm, the glory, a habitat, a habitat for glory. Yeah, yeah. Come, 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 come like a flame. Come like a, a wind. Come like a fog. Yeah, Lord. Glory, Lord, your glory, Lord. Come, settle in, settle in, settle in, settle in. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. More, Lord, more, Lord, more, Lord. <laughs> more. Hey. Fire, 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 fire. Let your fire come, Lord. for the cloud make room for the cloud make room for the
the cloud. Make room for the pillar, for the pillar of fire. Yeah, for the pillar and the cloud, the cloud and the flame, the cloud and the flame, the cloud and the flame. Make room, make way, make way, make way. We declare a glory company, a glory company, a glory company. We declare the glory company. Yeah, a people who are hosting the glory of the Lord. A people who are hosting the glory, who are hosting the flame. Yeah, who are hosting his presence. Yeah, who are hosting his presence. Who are hosting his presence. A habitat for divinity. A habitat for humanity. A habitat of glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. A dwelling a dwelling place, a dwelling place, a dwelling place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We don't have permission to stay the same. When the Lord speaks, everything changes. There's no going back. So, Father, our yes remains. We thank you for your yes over us. And we receive your yes over us, Lord. that was spoken when Jesus laid his life down for us and rose up and left and said, it's begun. It's begun. So speak over yourself this morning that it's begun. It's begun. And we speak to the region and we say, it's begun. It's begun. It's begun because there's a body of people that have said yes to the Lord. And it's going to spread across the country and across the globe. We say yes, Lord. We say yes to you. Hmm. So we're going to continue with the ministry that's already been happening. If the, the prayer team could come, the ministry team could come. There's a banner for healing and a banner for salvation. In the first service, God really stirred rededications. And so if that's something that, that the Holy Spirit's drawing you to, we just want to invite you up here. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord, then you can give your life to him today. All you have to do is say yes and invite him in. Just open the door. It says I'm knocking at the door. Behold, anyone who opens it up, I will come in and I'll dine with them. So come on, this morning you can let God dine with you. We want to agree with you. If you're a first-time guest, we want to pray with you at the Welcome Center. And I want to invite you one more time to intro to SRC, where we're just going to continue to see God show up. So bless you guys. If you're going to join us up at Jake's house, it starts at 6 with Charlie Champ. Come on, have a great, great day. Amen. Let's give a shout out to the work.